Well, I think the first two things that, that might be said about the maritime arena here is A, it's a show, it's a, a sideshow of everything else. And second, uh, the, um, there is a considerable asymmetry here between the two players, Israel and Iran. Uh, and strangely enough, it's the symmetry uh, towards, uh, towards us, because basically Israel has uh, zero interest in the Persian Gulf. There's nothing we, we need uh, in the Persian Gulf and uh, our oil is long ago, doesn't come up from, from that area. And uh, on the, in contrast, the Iranians to be what they want, or what they strategically aspire, they have to uh, maintain activities in the Mediterranean. Uh, in order to be uh, effective in supporting their allies and, and their overall strategic vision. So that's a very long voyage. Assuming uh, that uh, out of the uh, Strait of Hormuz, you have something like 500 nautical miles on the jaw of the Arab Peninsula up to uh, uh, Babel Mande, and then another additional thousand, something like thousand nautical miles up to the Jubail Strait, uh, the entering of the uh, Red Sea via the Suez Canal. And once they're out of the Suez Canal, uh, they still have some 300 miles to uh, Ladakia or Tartus, uh, sailing just in front of the Israeli shoreline. So that's a very long, long voyage uh, with uh, lots of exposure. Uh, and, and therefore, I think uh, basically uh, the only reason for them to take the risks uh, is that this is a way to uh, uh, go uh, around the oil embargo and sell uh, oil bring oil to the Banyas refinery in Syria, where uh, the proceeds probably goes part for the Syrian government, but mostly for the uh, revolutionary guards and finance their uh, establishment there, uh, funding whatever they, they need to fund. Um, so the, the real, this, what I call the sideshow, probably the, the show underneath the water, was a, a matching between or a match between uh, their uh, desire to bring oil tankers to Syria and our desire to uh, prevent them from uh, dislodging it. And that uh, mainly, I think, as far as straightly conflict between or clashes, uh, the paintball clashes between uh, Israeli forces, Navy forces and Iranian uh, vessels uh, took, took, uh, took place because uh, the last several years, uh, uh, most of the uh, incident uh, that came out to the public were some strange malfunctions uh, in uh, a number of uh, Iranian tankers that were trying to reach Banyas. Uh, it, it never really uh, came into something that is more in the open. Um, and this is, a, it's a, the imagination season because the, uh, the tricks and the, um, you know, the uh, clandestine efforts, uh, both to know who's selling where and what for and what they're trying to do and uh, the infrastructure that enables them to do, uh, to sell the oil. All these uh, elements were uh, part of the 
um, part of, of this cat and mouse uh, sessions that, that is taking place in the last years. Uh, but this is as much as you can say about it. Uh, I don't think there's more, uh, more of some, what you've been, people were talking about are much more serious problems. When it comes to hitting Israeli ships and uh, Israeli owned ships in the, in the Arab uh, uh, Gulf uh, and the, the Indian Ocean, do, do you think this is uh, something that can become some competing problem that uh, really can cause? Not really. Not re this, these ships are, are car containers. These are big. Uh, sailing hotel full of uh, just uh, uh, you know just full of, of of new cars from Japan and and Korea. Okay, so they're just helping us to uh, reduce the congestion in our streets. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing. <laughs> and 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 the matter of fact, the matter of, yeah, I know it's it's insulting, huh? Because yeah. there is. That that ship belongs to a company that is controlled by an Israeli businessman. But that's that's ridiculous, you know. It's, if you compare this to what uh, they are suffering, uh, it's just uh, there's no way of comparing. And and for us, this is really a uh, it's not a threat. So. Uh, at least as far as the, as the maritime arena is concerned, the Iranians are so much limited in what they can do that I don't think uh, the panel should spend any more time about it. Okay, that's a, for for change. We hear we hear something positive. It's uh, well, well, no. I mean, I mean, this is a. Look, the Israeli Navy is operating all over the Red Sea, freely. It's operating at the Mediterranean. They have to, their, their camel, their oil camel have to go through such a long caravan uh, in order to get to, uh, to Syria. And then all of a sudden they cannot unload because the infrastructure is damaged. And, and and so on and so forth. It's uh, well. I, I think they they still try try to do it. If they remove the uh, oil embargo, probably this will be uh, one of their main targets. But uh, by and large, this is uh, it's not the way. It, this is not the arena where the Iranians are winning. I understand that we are now focused on the movement of uh, cars from uh, Korea and Japan to uh, Israel, which is a, an issue. Um, but one of the things I was aware of, and I'm sure he is aware of, is the um, use of the use of the Red Sea. I don't want to get into too many details, Mediterranean for resupplying our terror adversaries. And uh, of course, you know, um, Sudan was an important conduit for uh, reaching Hamas. I won't go into all the details, but it seems that um, Iran has a problem. Iran wants to supply its various uh, supporters, and um, it has been seeking a, a, a land route for doing that through uh, Iraq and Syria. Well, another alternative route is the naval route. And the naval route creates a burden on our naval forces to try and stop it. So do you have any comment or you think that's not really relevant and it's not important? No, no, that, that's very important and very relevant. Uh, but uh, I, this is basically, I was focusing on the straight, so to speak, what I call the paintball clash between Iran and Israel on the on the on the seas. Uh, as far as uh, <clears throat> supporting terrorism, that's um, that's an activity that the Israeli Navy is involved in for years now. Uh, 
And I think uh, one of the you know, more publicized event was the Karine A uh, ship that, that was, I think Cooper was talking about that, uh, the uh, capture of uh, Iranian made uh, weaponry for Arafat. Uh, but uh, apart from this, uh, there's a continuous operations of uh, um, targeting. First, first of course, uh, it's intelligence, and then targeting every, or most of the, of the uh, um, <clears throat> attempt to move weaponry uh, either from the Red Sea or even from the Mediterranean. Uh, we just heard about uh, uh, some other incident and then the ship that uh, one of its container was, was hit. And uh, um, most of it uh, doesn't even come into uh, into the public. Uh, so that's that's a uh, a continuous. Let me put it this way: the um, forces, the navy forces that are now situated in a lot. Uh, contain one of the main, for, main main units of the Israeli Navy. And this is not an incident. It, it even had a submarine there. So uh, the, uh, the capabilities uh, right now of uh, thwarting any attempt to move uh, anything that is harmful to us uh, through the Red Sea, uh, is, uh, I think, by the Iranian standard, are the last options. Uh, okay. I think the, imp the, impact, the impact of what we've done in the last six, seven years in that area is, uh, is so, so effective that uh, it's not, it's, I mean, there's a reason why they, they really prefer the, the ground routes. Uh, it's just through the net, through the, the sea, it's much more difficult, 10 times more difficult. So yeah, in that thing, like the Navy is very effective. 